Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at a concept called computer properties, which is an alternative way to pass data to our blade files. So let's take a look at an example. So guys, so far we learned two ways of passing data to our blade files. One of them was using public properties on our component. And the second way was by doing it through this render method, right? So we would pass it as an array to this view function. And it both of them work very well. Now, there is an alternative method using computer properties, and the way you define a computer property is by creating a function or a method on your component. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and recreate this users variable using computed properties. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function called users. And then to make it a computer property, you need to give it an annotation with the computed attribute. And this is inside LiveWire attributes computed if you want to import that and then inside here we can basically pass in or do any kind of database operation and return your uh, property value so i'm going to go ahead and copy this actually from our render method so i'm going to replace the old way with this new computer properties so we can delete this actually and this is how you define a computer property and to access it on your blade file there is a slight difference and that is that with computer properties, you need to actually do this followed by the name of your property. So that, that is a difference you have to keep in mind, but also it lets you know that this is a computer property. So let's go ahead and save this and test it out. And my component works exactly the same way, okay? It is actually working. So that's how computer properties are. Now, computer properties have some advantages. So the first one is it is automatically cached for the duration of your request by LiveWire. So if you're using this users multiple times, for example, let's say you have, you know, a function update and you want to access these users multiple times, you can just say this dot users and, you know, call, you know, use it multiple times. So it gives you that ability. Second thing is if you, for example, put these users inside your render method, you won't be able to actually use it outside the render method, right? So if I want to use it inside update, I want to have to basically, you know, get my users again, which is a little bit annoying. So that's the second benefit. Uh, the next benefit is compared to actually regular properties. So compared to public properties, public properties actually have a limitation. And I show you guys with an example right now. So you are limited to what kind of data types you can have in public properties. So if I go ahead and I say active users, I'm going to define a new public property. And I say active users equals to the exact same thing we had for our computer properties or our render method. So with the pagination. And I save this and I go back. We actually get an error. And the reason is... Uh, when you do pagination, I think it's returning a type of paginator or something like that. That isn't actually supported. So you can only have, I think, native PHP types plus collections or a class. So you won't be able to have a type of paginator or whatever this paginate returns as a public property. So if you want to do pagination, you either have to use computed properties or pass it down to render. Except that computer properties also have the benefit of caching and you can easily use it everywhere else, right? So usually you probably want to use computer properties. And that's the thing. So there is one more benefit, and that is if I go ahead and I replace this with the just get, get all the responses on my database. Now this will work if I don't forget the semicolon. Now this is going to work because now we are returning a simple collection. However, there is one more difference between uh, regular public properties and computer properties. And that is, if I actually comment this out for a second, I'm going to reload and I'm going to go ahead. You can see this is my component, guys, and I zoom in. There is a section called, an attribute called wire snapshot that LiveWire adds, and it's basically all the data your frontend needs to work, okay? And LiveWire passes in all the public properties to your frontend. You can actually see the search here. We have a public property search. It's actually being passed down to our property to our component using this wire snapshot. And I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see. And then there is a few other stuff for the pagination we are doing. But the in, the actual user's computer property is not passed down here, okay? So it's not publicly accessible on our front end. It's only accessible inside the blade file. Now, if I were to actually 
and this active user's name is weird. I don't know why I did that. But if I were to actually uncomment this and reload the page, and I have to zoom out actually here, you can see um, our wire snapshot size, I don't know, it's like it's 10 times larger, maybe 20 times larger. And the reason is because it has my entire user's database here. So that's kind of the difference between public properties and uh, computer properties. The computer properties are kind of private. So they won't be visible publicly accessible on your or visible on your front end. So if you don't need it to be publicly accessible on your front end or be something the users can change, then don't define them as public properties. Also, it makes your HTML a little bit shorter. Okay, so if you have a lot of collections as public property, your HTML file size might actually increase quite a bit. It's not going to be a massive impact on performance, but that is something to be aware of. So that's another difference between uh, computer properties and public properties. So generally, if you want to do uh, something that has pagination or you're storing a collection, I recommend you guys don't do it in your public properties and you instead use uh, either computer properties or pass it down using your render method. Now, one more advantage is actually in LiveWire, if you're using the default blade file name, you can actually remove the render method. LiveWire automatically kind of uh, figures it out and renders it. So you can actually make your components a little bit shorter uh, using computer properties, which is very nice. So if I go and reload my component, it still uh, works. So that's a way of passing it down without the render method. Now, this computer, as I mentioned, guys, does cache the, the data throughout a single request. If you want to cache it over multiple requests for a single instance of a component. So for example, a single instance is we show this component to a user and they do multiple requests, you know, by typing in, clicking in, that's going to be one instance. In order, if they open a different page or duplicate it, it's going to be two separate instances. So if you want to cache a request for a single instance, uh, you can pass in an additional argument to this computer called persist and set it to true, and this will go ahead and cache it over multiple requests. And then if you want to basically define for how long or the cache TTL, uh, you can pass in another argument called seconds and then define, you know, the cache duration. So I'm going to say 3600, which is what the default is. Now, if you want to cache over multiple instances, for example, I have two copies of my component over two pages. You can also do that. And that is by passing in a last argument called cache and setting that to true. Now, this one is a little bit dangerous. Okay, obviously, it's going to cache it for all, all instances for all users. So if I go ahead and I test this out, I'm going to run this. I'm going to open it up on a new page. We get the exact same results. I'm going to go search. And as you can see, my search broke down. And the reason is because LiveWare has actually cached this in over multiple requests for all the components. Like, So it kind of breaks my components. So it has a bit less use case. I personally have never had to use this functionality, but it is there if you guys want to use it. Now, if you happen to cache something and you need to... Uh, clear the cache, you can use onset, onset, and then pass in your uh, property this way. Basically say this.users. So don't use the method name, okay? And this will go ahead and clear the cache. And I actually want to do that because as you can see, the cache broke our component. The, it's not working anymore. So I'm going to reload it. And hopefully the cache got cleared. It did not. I think I need to also remove this cache. Yeah. The persist cache is also breaking it. That's why. And as you can see now, it is working. So yeah, if you want to basically clear the cache, use onset. You don't need to be careful with caching, guys. As I said, because it using persist, it will keep it over multiple requests. If you have pagination or you're you know you have a search bar like this, obviously if you cache it, you won't see any changes. So you need to be careful when you use it. But it is a powerful powerful functionality for components that serve static content. And that is it, guys, for today's episode. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you get notified of the latest videos. And I see you guys on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.